Minecraft is a game about creation. Palaces, environments, contractions, or whatever, you can do it all. You might have been playing it for like 7 years now, and yet you are missing out on basically the best game modality that has ever been created for it. That's right, welcome to the CTM. Complete the monument. That's what you were asking, right? What the heck is a CTM? Well, it's a map genre where you have the names a goal, and you have to adventure into uncharted territory, dominate to what's usually 16 zones, collect the objectives, and complete the monument. These maps are fascinating and fantastical, and yet so niche. Start by the duration, 16 objectives and 16 zones can be quite long. You'll spend hours and days of playtime just to complete a map, as some zones can take between 50 minutes to 3 hours. Oh, but these images I'm showing you look quite small, you say? <laughs> Oh, you see innocent baby, just you wait. This is nothing. To start with, I should probably clarify what a Minecraft map is. Maps are human-made experiences which you can download and play to your, on your own. It's like a game within the Minecraft game. Skyblock and the Dopper 2 are two popular ones, but if you really have no idea, you should look into it right after this video is over. You might have spotted a cool map on the Minecraft marketplace and cursed the price tag without knowing free maps on Java Edition are abundant. Now, some of you older players may say, Hey, I know what you mean, I'm not missing out, I played something like this once. Well... When it comes to popular CTM maps, Diversity is definitely the one that takes the crown. It's a map by QMagnet created for Minecraft 1.7.4. Some of us are that old. But besides the general structure, this is nothing like the CTM experience. In Diversity, you're presented with 16 different trials based on popular map genres, like Parkour, Trivia, Adventure, or Arena. Once you complete the trial, you're rewarded with an objective which you'll place across the monument. The basic gameplay loop is about the only thing that you can see in real CTMs. The zones here aren't interconnected, so your performance on one will have no effects on the next, something which CTM maps thrive on, as I'll explain later. I still do recommend this map for someone who has no clue about Java maps though. It's a very old map now, so I'd recommend you play Diversity 3, also made by QMagnet, if you want a similar experience. But again, this has nothing to do with what an actual CTM map is like, besides the basic gameplay look. Stick around for some actual recommendations, but these loose maps are often the most popular, like Elytra Fall, which is great, especially for learning how to use the Elytra, but nowhere near what these maps are all about. Why? Well, it's just not... <laughs> Meet Bex Davion. Well, uh, just kinda, of course you can know everything about a person who just kinda exists in the internet, but what you can easily know about is his work. The Super Hostile Map. Fair. The first super hostile maps don't have a victory monument, the location where you place the objectives. That honor is taken by the first map we can actually call a complete monument, Kaiso Caverns. It's not so Kaiso anymore, but you can tell the intent right away. These maps are supposed to be hard, enemies appearing from left and right, pathways that spread across acres of lava. Your goal as a Minecraft player stops being about builds and resources and becomes survival, because that is your only option. This is one of the most obvious but cool aspects of Minecraft maps. They turned the established Minecraft mechanics on their head by modifying the flow of gameplay, and this is something that Bex understood. He understood very well. Castle Caverns is basically something between Minecraft and a Castlevania. You get the goal, and now you have to go through several areas in order to beat these goals. Go too fast, you'll be weak, and you'll die. Go too slow, you might not ever see that monument completed. See, CTM maps are arranged in a way where your hub world comprises of a small base with a victory monument and liminal passageways that connect the different zones or dungeons, which you'll progress linearly as you proceed with the game. Resources are limited, extremely. You'll rarely have diamond tier tools until extremely late into the map. You'll need to carefully plan your next move and trust your skills, because you'll need them. CTM maps have what I like to call a general flow. You find a zone, conquer it with your resources and a crap ton of torches, loot it to become stronger, find the objective and go to the next zone. The order of the zones can even be deduced through the color of the wool collectible found within the dungeon, which is the main collectible aka the objective. The last table of CTMs introduced in Kaiso Caverns is traps, cause, you know, sometimes exploding is fun. It sounds simple, but trust me, it gets difficult, like, like you'll die. You'll die a lot, and this is not even a fourth of what this general would proceed to evolve, because Let 
link and you might miss it, but the CTM format for Minecraft maps became a sensation. People coming together to fight these nightmares, making guides and wishing for more. Minecraft, with its relentless updates, giving each new strategy an edge against the Chaos and Flames. And with it, Legendary, Sermon Islands, and Spellbound Caves. Each of these maps has giant precursors to what would eventually become the Brother Genera. Legendary? Yeah, it's pretty evident. These wide open huge spaces that look to fit the title, entering a zone and having your brains blown. Sermon Island, straight away from the difficulty to create a more lax experience that would later inspire some of the most suggested maps for beginners. And then, Spellbound Caves. It evolved. Difficulty curves become part of the design, and with the incorporation of enchantments and potions, the whole metagame of the genera has changed. Loot became harder to choose. Armor could scale more appropriately to justify an encounter with a fun box. Yeah, that's time spawners. Beck invented and defined a genera. He is still even making maps to this day, trying to incorporate more custom mechanics because common blocks also change everything, but uh, give me a second to get there. Now looking for chests is double as important. Bex began thinking with the idea that players are curious and they will want to explore all the things, and they'll see something cool in the distance and decide to stroll their way over there just to find a single iron ingot, which can make a difference at any moment during the early game. Of course, that doesn't mean the genera was perfected. A lot of playtime was spent traveling from A to B. Look at this footage. And fairness, although more present in Spellbound Capes, still was in the back of the creator's minds. What Beck did with his maps, as amazing as it was, does not compare to what he did through his maps. This dude invented a community, inspired players and creators alike, and with the release of Spellbound Caves, the torch of progress was passed to someone else. Which is basically everyone else. So here's when a lot of people got into the idea of making CTM maps, which led to a few awesome variations that became staples in the genre. Some people took Sunburn Island's open world structure and made full maps with the idea in mind, but the general sentiment most aspiring mappers quickly realized was, well, holy crap, doing one of these takes like a full two-year development cycle, even when 80% of it is done with MC edit. Some decided to make shorter maps because of this, with two or three objectives. So, say hello to one of these guys in the pile. His name is Shekach. I hate him. Because apparently humans are rational, they agreed to play about 26 minimaps with insane difficulty on hardcore mode made by this madman. And then some guy called The Sketch really liked the idea and made another 9, and by 2014 the ship was a subgenera where suddenly you realize how much your computer hates you and how much you hate yourself. These maps have a huge advantage because they are short, so you can make a single very pretty zone and smile at the world with how much you really wish it would end right this instant. They are horrible, nightmarish, they bring that difficulty up to 11 and make it pretty so you think, well how bad can this be and well pretty bad. Then there's another way to reduce the workload, just get together with everyone else and make a map. That's right, monomyth maps, when a bunch of mappers got together, worked together and make some crazy pretty maps without spending 2 years on it. This idea changed the game when Pantheon came out. Admittedly, the map is a mess, and a lot of dungeons have MC edit and ward edit all over the landscape. Everything is a little orb, and yet this showed that the general was volatile. Looky here, in this list of names, you got Shekach, the guy who made those nightmare maps, and Amlop. Anlop is another great map maker who made the Uncharted Territory series of maps, which are particularly similar to what Bex was doing, something which you can tell by looking at the lobby of all three installments. It's just modernized versions of what Bex did, but a few custom mobs and items, I mention them because people on YouTube absolutely dig playing these maps, aka that was publicity, that was attention to the genre. Similarly, Cross, I think, would also input into making full-length maps, emphasizing the size of areas, which started to become important to the map creation process. Now too, is when the player base started gaining traction. Speedrunning these maps became a trend. Posting pictures of the Victory Monument to show everyone your achievement was, if nothing else, satisfying. Minecraft Let's Players on YouTube would have to show their real skills, which led to amazing playthroughs. Ito's Lab should now survival is something about being clever more than being good. Gunther, annihilating the buyers of times and beating entire maps in nothing but less than an hour. A rich MC, expanding the genre past the languages and exposing it to a huge Hispanic speaking audience, including myself, and he also gave me footage for those checkout maps because, excuse me, I'm not doing them to myself. But, but yeah, thanks, dude. Like, for real. Also, congratulations on our and well. And yet, something was missing. Throughout the maps, you'd get this playful, hello player, we hate you tone, that fit well with the difficulty, but there was some person in this whole puzzle who didn't quite love that idea. This person who wanted the more. They turned silver into diamond. Some get insomnia through the mere mention of his name. 
Elysio. The thing missing was definitely inspiration from Dark Souls, because all the elements were there, all you had to do was make them right, and right Elysio did. We're not talking about a minor improvement, we're talking night and day. <laughs> As the name implies, the Ragecraft maps were extremely hard, but just spamming unique strong mobs and having fun named items wasn't gonna cut it for Elysio anymore. He wanted to turn Minecraft into something else. Say goodbye to collecting wood and say hello to collecting thoughts. Say hello to insomnia. This map took mechanics and custom mobs to the next level, and its sequel, Ragecraft 3, is basically considered the creator of most popular tropes and mechanics. Dungeons expanded into areas with beautiful ceilings that simulate skyboxes all over parts of the environment. Traversal of the map became streamlined so you can actually focus on the fight, the combat, the loot and the strategy because it's just generally more fun. Lore and history was sipping into the immense detail every single part of these maps could have. Another idea borrowed from the storytelling of Dark Souls. Visual and lonely. Before you get piles of signs, now just this visual. I've been recently seeing people play Elden Ring, and I realized the feeling of entering a new area and seeing a massive structure before you, which shows some later, made for impactful gameplay moments where you're truly immersed in the world before you. Blocks or no blocks. Loot is no longer just a necessity, now the game presents you with an extra monument, which you can complete for unique legendary items and special gameplay boons. This turns loot into a thing you want to find, not just a thing you need. Richcraft 3, The Prophecy, presents an item called Frost Trap which the player can cleverly use to even out his chances against giant groups of enemies, where before you'd have to block a doorway to feel safe, now a single well-timed click can change your way of playing forever. Every time you get an item, you're compelled to try and experiment with it to know if it can help you at some point, even in the slightest. You need all you can get to beat the odds, which are against you. Always. And yet, it's not annoying thanks to the Nexus, a structure where the player can build their base. That was what it's all about. Having a safe space which you can relax and regroup before going on your next venture or attack to an area where you are sure to meet your demise. The addition of this downtime was huge. It also added teleporters, so now it's really quick to go through the map and you no longer have to backtrack a million times. Oh, bosses too! He also added bosses, custom mechanics, even lots of quality of life improvements that are too technical to actually go into during this video. It's a whole new world, visually and in design. This is huge to be done by a single person making a genera be reborn. And now, builds in the genera went from this to this. Presenting Darkbid and RenderXR. Darkbid made beautiful maps, these giant structures with enemies scrolling all over them and mastering of the shitty Minecraft lighting system like never seen before. RenderXR instead of making maps for broader audiences. Difficulty takes a backseat to the flow of gameplay, which has been smoothed out thanks to the knowledge obtained from the Ragecraft maps. No Arcana, Corona Trials and Lenta Fortuna are just a few examples of what inspires these creators to make and these players to play. I personally recommend you all try Corona Trials as your first map, it has nothing to do with COVID. I don't really love all of it, but it's built with difficulty scaling in mind, so you'll get a hang of the genre as you play, making it a great experience for beginners. However, 1.9 came out. PvP changed and Minecraft slowly lost popularity, the player base dwindled, and CTM maps, well you look at these builds and experiences and you can help but feel amazed because against the lots they didn't stop no they stuck to their gameplay design principles and applied them to something in real life to keep this genre they adore alive and so another revolution came forth but unlike last time it wasn't just bex creating a genre or helicio revolutionizing this was a joint effort it was the sum of several parts it was divinity's end <laughs> While I believe Ragecraft 3 is the superior map, I can't deny that Divinity's End is the ultimate CTM experience. Built by a team of several map makers, another monolith, it's now the standard to strive for when creating CTM maps. This third evolution was brought upon thanks to Datapacks, which facilitated the creation of custom mechanics, bringing about more creative and complex ideas, while talking custom enchantments and statuses, hit detections, player data storages, the cartographer Datapack. Using this tool with the right builds and the right gameplay, you can achieve quality. On a genre that is entirely carried by a small niche community, Divinity's End represents more than just a good map. It represents the way this community came together to create something amazing and unique. 
This joint effort, called a map wreck, has pushed these maps to be some of the most complex and tailored gameplay experiences built in Minecraft, and I couldn't be happier to see this genre remain standing tall, perhaps hidden, but way above the rest. Is there any question now why you should try it? Have you realized the way it breaks through the barriers of Minecraft? An active community and endless amounts of maps all at your disposal for free? But the most important part to me is the fresh design philosophy. It's not like these map makers had professionals behind them and endless budget, yet they still hit the nail on the head with lots of design ideas that giant corporations like Nintendo and Sony would begin to consider later in time. The player is curious and he wants to be amazed. That is the game design philosophy of The Witcher 3. That is the game design philosophy of Elden Ring, of God of War, of Breath of the Wild. That is the game design philosophy of the CTM map. Maps like Ragecraft or Divinity's End would be contenders to infinite praise and awards with it not shown through the frame of Minecraft. A peak of video games contained in Minecraft, and chances are you didn't know about it until this video. So what are you waiting for? Are you ready to take on the challenge and complete the monument? <laughs> of course you are, who am I kidding? You have to be an idiot to even dare not to try to pick one up. Like, did you see that thumbnail? So fun fact, I ended up stealing a lot of the footage because I realized that playing all of the footage myself would have taken like maybe possibly 300 hours and I literally do not have that time. So yeah, thanks to all the people who let me borrow footage. 